2 Corinthians 11. I'll tell you, I'll tell you another story. Friday must have been my day. Uh, Lisa and I, on Sweetie Pie Day, we kind of have a routine. We always say, where do you want to go? I always say, where do you want to go Friday? She says, I don't know. So we end up going to the same places. Every Friday, the same thing. We come here, say hi to the grandkids, and then leave. Because that's what grandparents can do. And we do it better than anybody in the world. We say hi to the grandkids, tickle them. I get them full of sugar, and then I leave. Right, Courtney? Yeah. So then we go to um, we go to Goodwill up in Arnold. We usually just roam around South County area. And um, so I was at Goodwill in, in Arnold. And every now and then I see something catches my eye, you know, and Lisa's looking through clothes and that. Well, they had... A great big box. It was about this big. And it, it was a box that has a computer case in it. Uh, just an empty case. And then you have to add all the other stuff. Well, I've done that several times. I got to looking at that case. And, and it was a nice case. One of the high-end gaming computers. You know, these gamers. They want all the bells and whistles. So... I looked at it, and then I kind of walked around the store for a little bit and just kind of thought about it for a while, and then I went back and looked at it again. And I thought, you know, I ought to get that. And it, the, the tag on it said, you know, computer case, $75. And I thought, well, this case, I've, you know, done this shopping before. This case is worth more than $75. And we use these high-end gaming computers anyway, for when we stream video because we have to have a lot of processors and a lot of stuff to handle all the video. So I thought, well, you know, what I could do is just buy the case because it's cheaper than what I could get it from someplace online and then I'll buy a motherboard for it and a couple hard drives and, and you know, just everything that it would need, you know, maybe over time and just build a brand new one. So I decided to get it and I picked it up and put it in Lisa's cart and it was heavy. So... Um, we bought it, and Lisa said, now, you need to hurry up and get that home and open the box up. I said, why? She said, well, you need to find out if it works. If it doesn't work, you need to bring it back. I said, Lisa, it's a case. It doesn't work. It's just a case. There's nothing in it to work. So we got it home, and I opened up the box and pulled it out, and I've got a $2,000 gaming computer with everything in it for $75. Windows 10, real nice graphics card, solid state hard drives for quick loading everything. I mean, it's got, it's water cooled. It's got this big radiator sitting on top of the processor that water cools everything. And I'm just going, that's a $2,000 computer, 75 bucks. So Friday was my day. You should have followed me around. We could have bought lottery tickets together, I guess, but I quit while I was ahead, all right? 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. Uh, somebody sent me uh, this, this week, the other, you've heard me talk about the anti-Bethel church, the other Bethel church in Redding, California. And I never want to be associated with that church because they do all this wacky, they, do, they send people out to graves of dead saints who they say were real powerful in the spirit. And they send these people out to their graves because they say these people had leftover blessings in their life that was never used. And so they're to go out to the graves and pray that God would give them the leftover anointing from these. And I'm going, that's necromancy. They call it grave sucking, but it's necromancy is what it is. And they do weird stuff like that. So then I get sent. Uh, there's a, a woman minister that's on staff there. And she, she does this quote unquote ministry where she has people sit down and at a table. And she lays out these little prophetic cards 
for people to go through. And I don't know how they do it, but it's basically tarot card reading. This woman has another spirit in her. And then she does this prophetic gifting where it's just kind of weird. But she goes to the weird, these weird festivals where they have this weird rock music and these young kids are dressed up in this, in some cases, almost no clothing. And she goes and does the henna tattoos and all of this stuff. I mean, and do, does what, is, what amounts to tarot card readings in the name of Jesus for these people. That is another spirit. And they have no discernment whatsoever. These people that fall for this stuff, number one, they fall for it because they don't know anything about the Bible and they don't want to know because what they're getting is non-biblical Christianity, if there is such a thing. It is another spirit, another Jesus, and another gospel. But the people who are leading these things, they ought to know what the Bible says and what the Bible says you shouldn't do, and that's one of them. It's divination is what it is. Just practicing divination, but saying that it's the Holy Spirit giving her this talent and, and the ability to see in these people's lives and do dream interpretations. and all the, But it's all this stuff without a Bible. That church is one of the churches that said the Holy Spirit doesn't need the Bible. The Bible needs the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going, ah. So anyway, so I got to thinking about that and uh, just thinking about the different kinds of spirit that are in the Bible. So we're going to go through some of those. If you want to do this study, I just, I search for spirit of blank in the Bible. And this is what you come up with. Number one. These people have a spirit of deep sleep or a spirit of slumber. In Isaiah 29, 10, For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. What that means is, is that they, they, as they read the Bible, they don't get anything out of it. They don't see what God is saying in the Word of God, in the Scriptures. And so that causes them to leave and abandon the Word of God, for they say there's nothing in here for us. And so they move away from there. But once you move away from the Word of God, there's a void. And there are spirits out there that are all too willing to fill that void. This is what's going on in churches. This is what's going on in people's lives and ministries. This is what this country is asleep. Amen? This nation is asleep. Okay? Or the stuff that's going on in this country would not be going on. But notice who gave them that spirit. The Lord did. He poured out upon them a spirit of deep sleep. Just like God pours out His spirit for, you know, the days come, I will pour out my spirit among all flesh. So here is God pouring out another spirit to these people. Why? Why is God doing that? These are people who already don't believe what God said. They don't fear God because they go out serving other gods. They're adulterers, they're drunkards, they're whoremongers, they're liars, they're thieves, they're murderers, they're, they're judges who, uh, who take gifts and bribes and things like that. And so they already don't worship and honor God. And so God just turns them over by pouring upon them a spirit of deep sleep. Yes, they're walking around and shaking hands with people and talking to people and they would look normal. But as far as understanding what the Bible says, they've got their eyes closed and they're asleep. Romans 11, I think, is capturing what Isaiah 29 says. Romans 11, 8 says, According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear and he's talking about Israel unto this day. There are just some people that you can quote scripture to, you can give them Bible verses, and it has no penetration, no impact in their life. Their eyes are closed, their ears are closed, and they see nothing and they hear nothing, and they'll never get anything from God. So, who in here has read something out of the Bible and God gave you the doodads and you just saw something you never saw before, a little tear came to your eye 
and you just realized how blessed you were that God would show you that. How many of you? Okay? Tell God thank you for that. Because your sin warrants God pouring out a spirit of deep sleep on you. That's what God could have done. But that's not what God did. God didn't close your eyes. What he did was he opened your eyes. And you see things that other people, as they read the Bible, they just don't, they don't see it and they won't see it. Uh, turn to 1 Thessalonians 5. Let's cover some ground there. 1 Thessalonians 5. Spirit of deep sleep. To whom is the day of the Lord going to catch off guard? To whom is the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night? Okay? We uh, live in a time right now where we lock and deadbolt our doors at night. Um, D, your house was busted in too, wasn't it? Okay? That just gives you the jitters. Okay, uh, when my dad passed, he t before my dad passed away, he has a 22 pistol, and he taught me how to shoot with this pistol. And Dad told me, he said, you know, when I die, you can have that pistol. I said, okay, Dad. So Mom's going through the stuff, and she's giving me some guns. I said, Dad had a 22 pistol. Mom said, I've got it. I said, oh, okay. Well, I said, Dad, you know, said I could have it, and she said, well, after I die, you can have it. She said, I'm going to keep it next to my bed. I said, Mom, you go ahead. You take it out in the backyard, learn how to shoot it. I think Mom knows already. Mom knows how to shoot well. She shot out a TV when she was little. She shot out the family TV watching Annie Oakley. Boy, I'm glad she's not here this morning. Yeah. So anyway, um, I keep a gun next to my bed. And there's a few of my big guns that are loaded in the gun safe and ready to go. Because I don't know who's coming to my house, but if I'm asleep, I don't have a big dog that'll lead them up. I've got a little dog that'll let me know that somebody's coming. I like them little dogs, amen? We have to watch for the things that are coming. But there are people, the day of the Lord is going to catch them while they are. God has already poured out a spirit of deep sleep upon them. They are in a slumber. Their eyes are closed. And the day of the Lord will come upon them as a thief in the night. So First Thessalonians 5, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Tell God thank you for that one too. Because if you're worried, just rest in what God said. Because if you are a child of the day, you're, there's no need for you to worry about God taking you off guard. He'll, he'll come to you and He'll let you know. Uh, verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 4, But ye, brethren, not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. That is another way of discerning whether or not it is the real spirit of God or an imposter spirit. The imposter spirit is the spirit of drunkenness. And there will be people acting like drunks. They will be thinking as drunkards. In other words, they can't think too well. They are very promiscuous people. Um, they have no judgment when it comes to things that are right and things that are wrong. They have no discernment whatsoever. God issued a decree, a law that said to the priest, if you're standing and receiving... Um, any of the sacrifices, you're not to drink wine or strong drink. Because if you're drunk and people bring you a lamb or a goat or any kind of offering and that, that goat or that lamb has, has spots on it or it's sick or something's wrong with it and you don't detect it, then it's going to defile my whole tabernacle. 
So if you're drunk, you'll not be able to tell the difference between clean and unclean, between holy and profane. And what happens is people come into the house of God. This is the house of God. This is where we come together to worship. There is a difference and should be a difference between the way we do things here, the way we do things out there. Amen? Okay? This is the holy place. Okay? There's lifestyles and, and music and things that should never be done in this place while we're gathered here. Can I get an amen out of somebody? Amen. Okay. God taught me that lesson. I had people trying to teach me that lesson all my life. And then God taught me that lesson. Mike, this is the house of God. There's things we don't do in here. Ways that we don't, partic things we don't participate in. But that has gone by the wayside in a lot of churches now. And, and people are starting to see it. That the churches have turned into an entertainment center. They've turned into uh, being life coaches. And everything's about this, this being having positive mental attitudes and positive thoughts and everything nice and pretty, but it's not the house of God. It's not where souls can be saved. It's not a place where holiness lives and thrives. Amen? It's not a place like that. And so therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. And so these people that are in darkness... When the Lord appears, it is going to catch them. Because they're asleep, they're in the dark, their eyes are closed, they cannot see the signs of Christ coming, and so they miss it. But God's people, I promise you, that God's people are going to know. You don't have to listen to me three times a day and, and get all that Bible education just so that you don't miss the rapture, you don't miss the Lord appearing in the clouds. I promise you, if you are a child of God, God's going to let you know. He's going to put, I don't know how He's going to do it. He's just going to do it, and we're going to see it because we're children of the day, and we have the light shining in us, and we can see. God has not closed our eyes. He's not closed our ears. We're going to see the Son of Man descending in the clouds, and we're going to hear the trumpet. Amen. It's not going to catch us off guard. So that's a spirit, a spirit of sleep, a spirit of slumber. That is a different spirit than the Holy Spirit. So that's, that's one thing Paul was talking about. Hosea chapter 4. Turn there. Hosea chapter 4. Now we have a spirit of whoredoms. Do you believe that there is a spirit or spirits that are somewhat responsible for the growth of adulterous immorality in this country. Absolutely, you should. You should believe that. Hosea chapter 4. Look at verse... Look at verse 12. Oh, wow. You know what? Go back up to... Um, Go back to verse 8. They eat up the sin of my people and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Now look at verse 11. Here it is. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. Okay? Whoredom and wine. And new wine take away the heart. What happens is we have churches, pastors, people all over America who don't care anything about the Bible, about God's ways. Why? Because their life is full of whoredoms, adultery, fornication, wine, and I would add to that drugs, anything that is an intoxicant that just warps your mind out and opens you up to a lot of very, very bad spirits. Anything like that. That's what's happened in this country. That's what's happened with a lot of people in church. That's what's happened with some churches. They have sold out their heart to iniquity and to wine and any kind of 
intoxicating anything. They've sold their heart out to that. Their heart has been taken away. And so now, this is the setup for verse 12. My people ask counsel at their stocks. What is that? Is that they play the stock market? Is that what that is? A stock is a stick. It's a piece of wood. What do they do with a piece of wood? They carve it. They make them a little god. That's my, that's my pretty little god. My people ask counsel at their stocks. They pray to a piece of wood, a stupid piece of wood. Okay? And their, dis and their staff declareth unto them, for the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. Spirit of whoredom. And they have gone a-whoring from under their God. Uh, hold that place there. Turn to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. Here we have the drunkards of Ephraim. Because of a spirit of drunkenness poured out upon them. Um, verse 7. Isaiah 28, they have also erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. There is, uh, I would say, earthly wine, earthly strong drink, and then there is a spiritual strong drink. There is an earthly way of being a drunk, being intoxicated, and it has effects that we see in people. Their speech is slurred. You can't understand half of what they say. When someone's drunk, they, they stumble a lot. They fall a lot. Have you ever seen these cops doing a field sobriety test on some drunk? And one of them is, they got to hold their foot six inches above the ground and count without falling. Okay? And the guy will hold his foot up like this, like the Karate Kid, and they'll have to stop the test because he's going to fall and hurt himself. Okay, he's going to bang his head on the on the ground or something like that. That guy's too drunk to even do the test. Think about that spiritually. From people who are supposed to be reading the Bible and giving the Bible to people in a church, but they are spiritually drunk. And they err in vision. Means that they read the Bible and they read the wrong thing out of, or into it or out of it. They don't see things. They don't see right and wrong. When you're drunk, you don't see right and wrong. You make dumb decisions that you would not make when you're sober. Okay? You would do things and say things and act in certain ways that you would not act that way when you're sober. Likewise, with a spirit of drunkenness, is poured out on people. They act in a way that they would not normally act as Bible-believing Christians. They do not see certain things being right and or wrong out of the Scriptures. Okay, They're the ones who call good evil and evil good. They call light darkness and darkness light. And they would rather have the darkness because drunks love darkness. They don't like the light turned on. Okay, Gives them a headache or whatever. But all of these things that you see in somebody in, in the earth that is a drunkard, those are things spiritually that happen to them. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. They believe that there's many mistakes, errors, in the Bible. They cannot see that the Bible is 100% true. They cannot see it. They don't believe it. You can't talk them into it. They're just not going to have it because they have a different spirit in them. So, keep, keep that in mind. So, uh, verse 7 again. They have also erred through wine and through strong drink or out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They didn't drink the wine. The wine consumed them. They are out of the way. through str The way is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So now you have Joel Osteen, who is a drunkard, spiritual drunkard, who Oprah Winfrey asked him, point blank, do you believe that Jesus is the only way to God? He said, yes. 
left, and I'm going, okay. But then he said, but there are many ways to Jesus. Okay? In other words, he's stumbling in judgment. He's out of the way through strong drink. Many ways to Jesus. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Okay? This is the top preacher, I guess, in America. And this, is what, this is what America has produced. Okay? This is the kind of guy America has produced. Uh, they, err, they, they are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. And then verse 8, all tables are full of vomit. This is a communion table. It is where we serve up the bread and the fruit of the vine. Okay? It is a, those of you who come to communion here, you know with me it's a very somber, very sober, very sacred service. I don't kid around. I don't tell jokes and cut up and try to get people to laugh at me. It's a very serious, sober service. And I tell people, if you do not think that you're worthy to do this, don't do it. You'll be in danger if you do. Make sure your heart is right with God. Make sure your life is clean. Make sure your sins are forgiven. This is a very, very holy thing. Okay? And so, but what's happened is, the church is now serving up vomit. Serving up vomit. There's a, a breed of African dogs. That's what they're called, African wild, African wild dogs. And they've been depleted down, but they're trying to get some of their, there's about 5,000 left in Africa. But they're very, um, they're very family oriented in that there'll be a pack of dogs and there'll be two lead dogs, a male and a female. They're the only ones who mate and produce pups. And the rest of the pack will serve, basically they'll serve those pups. Okay? There'll be some that'll stay at the den to guard the pups while the others go out and kill and bring in meat. Okay? And how they feed the pups is they go out and these are very efficient killers. They kill, and then they ravage through a carcass very quickly. I mean, they eat it down. Lions take days. These wild dogs take minutes. And they'll just, it's like piranhas. They'll just consume everything. But several of the dogs, including the pup's mother, will eat her belly plum full and then come back to the pups. And that's how she feeds her pups. And that's how she feeds the dogs that stayed behind that didn't go out. Aren't you glad God didn't make us dogs? Amen? So, and I've said this for years. The only thing worse than a preacher serving up a table of vomit is the dogs in the church who lap it up. And that's what they're doing. It's what they're getting when they receive the garbage and the vomit. That come with the lukewarmness that Jesus is talking about because you're lukewarm. And what that what is lukewarm? You ever think about that? It is the mixture of hot and cold. It's a mixture of opposites. And what happens is they mix a little bit of God in the Bible with the world. And they mix that together. And then they serve that vomit up to their congregations, and their congregation just laps it up. Because most people they want to be able to keep their sins and live their wicked lifestyle and yet come to church and feel like God accepts them that way. See how easy that is? Well, that's good church, isn't it? Just go out and do whatever you want to do and, and come in and act holy and spiritual for an hour of church and then leave feeling like you really got close to God because the music was really good. But they served up and lapped up vomit because of the drunken preachers. Um, let's see here. Where was he? Isaiah 28. So, um, verse 9, God is looking for people he can teach knowledge. Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. And then he gives that precept and precept and so on and so on. God is looking for people that want to believe and know what this Bible says. Has he found them in you? Can I hear you say amen? So back to... Back to uh, Hosea chapter 4. They have a spirit of whoredoms that has caused them to err, and they have gone a-whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills. 
under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. And I believe that there is a, a, a two-level understanding of this. Number one, they are committing whoredoms and adultery physically in this world. And because of that, this causes them to change their doctrine, change their religious practices, and what they've done is they've mingled. They've, they, still call him, they still call him the Lord. Aaron did that. In the, in the day that they were under Mount Sinai, they cast all their gold into this pot and, and they fashioned this calf. And Aaron said, These be thy gods, O Israel. And they had a feast unto, the Bible says, the Lord. Which tells me that they put this calf in the place of the Lord. And they worshipped the calf and called it the Lord. But it wasn't the Lord. You get what I'm saying? But because of their whoredoms, because of their drunkenness, that's what their mind was turned over to. And they committed spiritual adultery on God. They went out. Here God is trying to raise up. This, this is the whole thing that Paul's teaching here in, in 2 Corinthians 11. He said, I've espoused you to one husband, Jesus Christ. So before the marriage, let's make sure that you are clean when you go to meet Jesus. That's what I want. Is to be clean for my wedding day. And it's our responsibility as the church, the real church of Jesus Christ, to not go out chasing others, chasing other religions, or mingling other religious ideas and other religious practices, false doctrine, into the house of God. Stick with the Bible. Amen? Stick with the Word of God. We'll be clean on marriage day. That's that spirit. Spirit of whoredom, spirit of adultery. Hosea chapter 5, verse 4. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. For the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Notice that, what I have underlined there. They frame their doings to turn, un, uh, to turn unto their... They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. It is our responsibility to make sure that our actions, our deeds, our doings, the things that we do in life are becoming to a Christian. What is it that deal in the uh, military? They, they, can, they can charge you with conduct unbecoming an officer. What does that mean? That you were involved in conduct that anybody who is an officer in the Marine Corps, the Army, or the Navy should not be doing. Amen? If the military can have rules and laws concerning conduct unbecoming, why not Christianity? We do. But they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredoms is in the midst.